where does doctors fit in like mbbs doctors i'm saying do they also practice audiology and speech language i think is it their curriculum or if i do baslp i become somebody specialized which even mbbs doctors cannot practice or uh, what what exactly that with the these two are fitting in yeah you are absolutely correct because if you are if you are an audiology speech language pathologist okay you are a professional who are going to deal with these patients okay but an mbbs doctor cannot do audiology mbbs doctor cannot okay. do speech language pathology because it's a breach of scope as per okay. the norms of okay. the council there is a scope okay. of practice so that is what i mentioned earlier scope what is my scope what is my area of work i can do okay. what is the area of work of a uh, doctor so the okay. scope of practice in this area as defined by the government of india is a legislative thing is only audiology speech pathologists can do this okay. now for example if you take mbbs when a ent doctor is studying ms ent he will have a small unit in audiology okay okay right where what we do is that small unit we study we elaborate and study for 4 years to 6 years mm -hmm. so you are an expert in that but a doctor will know what audiology is he will know what an audiologist are what speech pathologist are but they will not get into deeper because they don't have time to do that because our course itself is minimum you, you need at least 6 years to understand everything okay okay, okay. right now coming back to the uh, the thing now i was telling about the council i spoke about what an audiologist so they are the people those are going to deal with communication disorders now what are the communication disorders the disorders that affect communication what disorders can affect communication if there is a disorder in hearing hearing can affect communication because if you can't hear you cannot speak right you cannot understand so you cannot speak someone who has a problem in the brain can affect communication somebody has a problem in any of the uh, you know speech mechanism system for example nasal oral laryngeal respiratory neural muscular skeletal if there is a problem involving any of these areas they may have a communication disorder for example somebody has a cancer of the cheek because of too much of tobacco chewing where the entire half of the face has to be removed so he will not be able to speak properly it's a communication disorder someone has a cancer in the throat they'll remove the complete larynx then you will have to put artificial larynx and you have to make them speak right there are a lot of children those are born with hearing loss from birth and there are a lot of children those have normal hearing at birth and develop hearing loss later stage in life there are adults those who lose hearing because of noise exposure because of autoimmune disorder because of accident because of some infections they may lose hearing right and um, road traffic accident brain damage and older people they get stroke because of which they can't speak right and lot of children are born with genetic anomalies syndromes down syndrome autism you no know, cerebral palsy right so uh, children with the childhood uh, you know rita mental retardation so all these are the areas where you are going to be a major key player right so to put it in a very simple terminology just for you to understand on an average approximately 20 to 25% of the world population has got some form of communication disorder okay what is 20 to 25% it's a huge correct right. comparative to diabetes let's take diabetes diabetes is not more than 10% this is 20 to 25% okay but the professionals available there are audiology speech pathologists available to treat these kind of uh, people are very 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 less simply because not every country has this program first of all right every country may have mbbs program medical doctor program not every country has got an audiology speech pathology program the second thing there are only very few countries as i told you which has got this program and even those countries has got very less number of institutions which is running this program okay even in those institutions there are only very less number of intakes that happen for this program you know what is the average maximum intake for audiology speech pathology in each institute 
maximum is only 40 on an average it is only 20 25 so the number of graduates those who pass out every year graduates those who come out every year is very very less compared to other courses compared to physiotherapy compared to occupational therapy compared to dental compared to mbbs this is a very very small niche group of professionals those who pass out where else when they pass out and come they have a huge number of patients where none of the disciplines have got so much of patients are available very less number of people are coming so what does it mean it means the demand is going to be quite high is already high right so in a very simple term for you to understand if there are 100 patients for each doctor per day which means if each doctor can see 100 patients every day let us assume that everybody in this country has got an access to the doctor the same analogy if you apply to audiology speech language pathologist every one audiology speech pathologist has to see almost 25000 patients a day for everybody in the country to have an access right, right, right. Yeah, and that's yeah. the ratio mm -hmm. so the reason why I have to give this uh, analogies and figures is for you to understand the importance of the, the need, basically the need okay, and the demand. Right. So, look at that. In your city, okay, I've told about the need, I've told about the scope, I've told about the opportunities. I will tell you about the growth now. Now, everybody wants to reach the top, right? Now, how will you reach top? It is competition. If there are 100 cardiologists in a small city, the 100 cardiologists have to compete among themselves to know who is on top. Right. Now, there, are, there may be 150 physiotherapists. There may be 200 occupational therapists, 70 psychologists or 90 psychologists. But there will be only 10 or less than 10 audiologists. So... You are going to compete with only 10 people in a city, whereas in other professions, they have to compete with 50 to 60 to 70 people, which means the competition is less. Your growth rate is quite higher. You'll grow much faster because your visibility is much better, provided all those things, if you are good in the profession. Right. The key word is you have to be good. There's no doubt about it, whichever profession you take. So this is the thing that I want you to understand how this you can grow in the profession. Right. Next, I'll tell you what will be your role. What am I going to do as an audiologist, speech pathologist? Now, your role is to identify, diagnose, treat and manage patients with communication disorders right from birth to their death. Which means if a child is born, Audiologists have to go and test the child's hearing within one day of birth. Okay, so your job starts from there. Okay, and across the lifespan of any person, you are required. Yeah, they may, they may, the child may have a, a develop into an uh, uh, adolescent, go to adult, adulthood, and geriatric. At any point of their lifestyle, lifetime. They may have hearing problem, they may have speech problem, they may have some other problem which affects communications. You need to be there. So your job is to identify, diagnose, treat and manage all forms of communication disorders right from birth to the death of a person. Right. Now, let's go more into audiology. What is audiology? Now, audiology is a science that deals with hearing and hearing disorders. Okay. Now, Hearing is one of the most sophisticated sense. Yet, it is the only sense that can be restored, even lost completely. Keep this statement very clearly. Okay. Hearing is the only sense that can be lost, that can be restored, even lost completely. It means, even if somebody is born without the ear, 100% hearing loss, you can make them hear normal. Okay. If a child is born with blindness, you cannot give vision to the child. Right. But if, if, if someone is born with total hearing loss, you can make them hear normal. And who is going to make them hear normal? The audiology speech pathologist. You're going to restore it. Of course, you will have a team. I'll explain who the team is. But you're going to play a major role in the team. Okay. Right. Okay. So, which means what? 
this field is progressing the field is progressing so much of advancement is happening in this field so there is this this again creates another i mean some more demand for this field as well a field where the technology is not progressing growth is not happening will die and the professionals will become dinosaurs like right. a field which is growing is a futuristic field okay i'll give you another example why this field is going much faster for you to understand any profession which has got the more higher and higher and higher and higher of qualification is a profession which is growing yeah. okay right specialties see for example initially in those days there are mbbs doctors okay then they had ms md ms in each specialty okay for example ms Uh, in neurosurgery then it came mch in neurosurgery okay then in neuro somebody specialized in spine somebody specialized in this area that area so every field is getting more and more super specialized which means the science is advancing so much so there is so much to learn about the little thing right that is advancement the similar advancement is happening in audiology speech pathology where you have bachelor in audiology speech pathology you can do masters in audiology speech language pathology you can do phd in core area of audiology core area of speech language you can do specialization in in audiology super specialization in audiology post doc in audiology see you see how many qualifications that you can obtain in this profession that means the field is developing that's what it means right so if someone has got an idea will there is a scope i have given enough evidences from the different perspectives why this field has got a great scope and demand to you so now i again moving into this hearing audiology to it okay now let's take um, uh, a child a child who is come born completely deaf now this child will go to the doctor the parents will take the child to the doctor and doc then tell the doctor doctor my child is not hearing that means my child is not responding when we call him he is not at all turning back for anything he is not hearing right. what will the doctor do doctor will not do anything he will have right. to send the child to the audiologist okay. okay the audiologist is a person who is going to do several investigations and answer some of the important questions and make decision for the doctor and also for the parent his decision is going to help the doctor for further treatment where he is going to be part of the treatment as well the audiologist will also be the part of the treatment okay what are the things number 1 he has to conclude whether the child has got a hearing loss or not he has to conclude whether the child has got only hearing problem or any other associated problem he has to also diagnose whether the what is the percentage of hearing loss what is the I mean what is the degree of hearing loss what is the type of hearing loss where exactly is the problem <coughs> whether this particular problem is treatable not treatable if treatable what are the different treatment options among this treatment options which is suitable for this child okay this treatment is suitable for the child whether the child is suitable for this treatment or not and how long the treatment will take what will be the cost of the treatment who are the professionals to be involved in this treatment finally what will be the outcome of the treatment he is the person who is going to answer all these questions okay. only based on his report the further treatment is planned that is why i told he is a clinician who is going to make diagnosis it is not like somebody got hurt uh, had a bike accident fractured his leg goes to orthopedician orthopedician does a surgery after the surgery um you know some plate is fixed and the doctor refers the patient to the uh, physiotherapist and the physiotherapist will teach him uh, di different types of exercises to build the muscle tone and bring him back so the the diagnosis is also itself is made by the audiology speech pathologist right so it's not so just the recuperation it's it's not just the recuperation it's yeah, it's okay. identification if the child right. is deaf or not from identification then to diagnosis and to plan the treatment it starts from right. there yeah, right. yeah yeah okay now the audiology says okay sir this patient needs just a simple hearing aid just put a small hearing aid 
he will be able to hear. Fine, that is the solution made. Now, who has to fit the hearing aid? Who has to program the hearing aid? Again, the audience has to do it. No. Okay. Right. Okay. And maybe he may say, okay, sir, this child will not benefit with hearing aid. He may, his loss is too much beyond 80%. So he needs a surgery. You have to put a cochlear implant inside. So then the cochlear implant surgery is planned. The surgeon opens the cochlea, puts the electrode inside. Then who is going to test it in the theater, operation theater? Audiologist. We'll have to, as a major role in it. Okay. After the implant is done, again, the child will come to the audio. Audiologist has to program the implant to make him hear. Right. Other decision. The, the audiologist will take, okay, the child has got normal hearing, nothing to be done. That decision is also made by them. The audiologist will say, no, sir, the problem is in the middle ear. The eardrum is, there is a hole in the eardrum. There is a pus in the middle ear. The third bone or the second bone or the first bone is missing. He has got a problem there. Then he, need, he does not need any other thing. He needs a medical management. So then the doctor will do the medical management, the surgery or medicine, whatever it is. So the crucial decision making and the most important person along with the doctor is an audiologist. So he plays a major role. Okay. So I, I want to make one point very clear to everybody. Every time I say this is the role of audiologist, 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 it does not mean other team members are less important. Right. Keep that in mind. I'm here to highlight the importance of audiologists. That is why I'm highlighting their importance. Okay. Keep that in mind. Yeah, professor. Yes, sir. Continue. So this yeah. is this is the one of the role of audiologists, making diagnosis. Right. Now, the next is, as I told you, when it comes to the uh, treatment part, for example, after the diagnosis is made, during the treatment also, the audiologist plays a major role, fitting the hearing aid, programming the hearing aid, optimizing the hearing aid. Okay, it's very important. See, optimization of hearing aid and fitting the hearing aid is a very skilled work. It is not like how you see in the advertisements today, you know, you come by your hearing aid and go, that's all is not correct. That is not optimizing, right? So it's a role of an audiologist and every hearing aid center, every hearing aid place, everybody needs an audiologist. Without an audiologist, nobody can sell a hearing aid or dispense a hearing aid or fit a hearing aid. If somebody is fitting a hearing aid, optimizing hearing aid without an audiologist, as per the constitution, it is illegal. So which means your demand is increasing. And keep one more thing in mind. As per the WHO, the World Health Organization, report on hearing it's called the wrh world report on hearing the it has been predicted and announced one of the most um, you know economically pressurizing disorder in the future is going to be hearing disorder mm -hmm. because every in 10 years down the line every fifth person on the road is going to be deaf or some form of hearing loss right and it, we are seeing it. We are seeing it because of all this in, uh, entertainment and noise pollutions. Even youngsters are getting hearing loss. Right. Okay. That's a different topic. We'll talk later. However, the reason why I wanted to quote this is to tell the importance of it. So the, the, the management option is hearing aid optimization. Cochlear implants, they play a major role. Right. And also the brainstem implants. I'll brainstem implant I'll highlight a little more uh, later because that's very, very interesting thing that everybody should know what it is. Okay. So at every level, this audiologist plays a major role, right? And there are a lot of situations where emergencies can happen here. For example, I have a lot of patients. One of the patients is, a, is a, a very nice gentleman. He hails from an Islamic family, very nice family. He had his biryani, slept woke up in the morning with total hearing loss. Oh, okay. okay, it is not it's not because of the biryani. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. okay it's an autoimmune <laughs> problem. All right. So hearing loss can happen any point of time. It can happen just like that. People can lose hearing in fraction of seconds completely. That's okay. a medical emergency where the audiologists are required to diagnose and help in the treatment. All right. So this is one aspect of it.